lovely people and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be giving you a little story time again and telling you how I came to the UK, why I came to the UK and why I went back to Bulgaria to do an Erasmus. I came to the UK first of all because I've always known that I'm going to study abroad. This was always, even my parents were telling me go study abroad like Bulgarian education, I don't want to kind of diss it but for me I think it just wasn't right. I just, I was always struggling in high school, not, I, I don't mean with grades because grades were okay, like I was doing fine, but I was really struggling with the way of teaching, the way of kind of reading analysis and you know repeating what this author has said but not really thinking yourself and analyzing it yourself, you know that kind of thing I was always 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 struggling with. So I wanted to come to a different country in order to actually have a more practical education as well. I decided to do fine art actually when I was actually so close to already applying and I was so close to the deadline and I just really just had to make a decision and deciding to do fine art was actually really a decision made on a whim which you know some people might think is a bit dodgy because you know this is a big decision like it's the next at least three years of your life and you've just decided it like this so but you know what it actually went pretty well I came to the UK first of all because really high kind of quality of education that is known kind of throughout the world it's interesting because people in the UK don't think that their education is so high quality anymore but coming from an Eastern European country into a Western country I think education is quite high here. So the other thing which made the UK's case when I was applying was the fact that they do student finance and they basically fund your university fee fully. So my university fee and mostly in the UK university fees at the time were £9,000 per year which is roughly about 18,000 leva. A lot of money and I didn't have that kind of money my family didn't have that kind of money especially for fine art <laughs> so I decided you know what I'm gonna go to the UK I'm going to get this loan and then I'm gonna repay it at some point in the future and the good thing about repaying the loan is that you don't have to repay it until you're making 25,000 pounds a year and then you also kind of return very little amounts of money at, at a time. So it's very easy to actually repay it, I think. I haven't started repaying it yet, so. And you get at least four years of finance. So that was absolutely great. And in the first three years, I didn't get what is called maintenance loan here, which is essentially paying for your accommodation, for your food, etc., which UK people get because they've lived in the UK. You have to have lived at least three years in the UK in order to get that loan. Now, when I went into my master's this year, well, last year, I started getting the maintenance loan as well, which was a nice bit of money as well to cover my rent and fees and whatnot. So, coming here in the first year was so, so stressful. First of all, language barrier. I was actually quite good at English, even in high school. I was always top, kind of top grade A student. I did my IELTS exam before coming here, so it was just very, very weird for me to come here and actually have language barrier, you know? Because a lot of British people have a lot of different things they say like, like I think my biggest cultural shock in the beginning was like them asking you, you're all right, mate? And I'm being, yeah, I'm good, how are you? And they don't reply. <laughs> because for them it's a way of saying hi <laughs> so this was a huge huge language barrier thing for me and you know I couldn't make so many jokes etc but that wasn't as difficult as it actually was when I was in uni because during the lectures I swear to you I had no idea what the hell they were on about I was listening to the lectures and I was writing things down probably with so many writing mistakes as well and I just remember you know, hearing words like context, concept, um, juxtaposition and stuff like that and I was just there like, 
what does this mean? <laughs> I don't know. The first year was so confusing, but at the same time, it was very much practice based. I learned so many things like printmaking, I did some photography, I did some sculpture, I did installation. This is the great thing about fine art in the UK. It's because that you get to learn everything that is art. So if you want to do video, one week you can do video, next week you can do photography, the next week after that you can do painting, the next week you can do printmaking, you can do anything you want. As long as you can kind of justify what you're doing and why you're doing it. But after that first year I started thinking, well you know what, I, I came here doing this kind of very contemporary art education. I just kind of wondered, did I make a mistake and not going to, for example, the National Academy of Art in Sofia? and just came here straight away without even, you know, giving it a try. So this was always kind of in my head. And then at some point in our second year, we got told that we can go on Erasmus. What Erasmus is, it's essentially a program where you get to study abroad for one semester of your second year. And because my bachelor's was three years, I had to do it in the second year. You can't do it in the third year. So I thought, oh, you know what, it's now or never. So I was looking at the kind of list of all the universities and I saw that National Academy of Arts in Sofia was on there. <laughs> so I thought that's going to be a bit crazy if I went back to Bulgaria to do an Erasmus, but my decisions in life have never made so much sense. So let's try it. <laughs> so I signed up and I went to do my Erasmus in February 2017. It was a very big cultural shock again. Even though I've lived in Bulgaria all my life, I've lived in a small city called Kustendil. And still, Sofia is so much different than Kustendil, even though it's in the same country, it's almost like light years away. I lived in, in Sofia with my friend Claudia and another flatmate, and we lived in this like two bedroom apartment in Oftrakupel. My biggest struggle with the Erasmus was the actual ad people in administration, because I didn't know, this is just ridiculous, I didn't know that I had to do one subject, for example, halfway through my Erasmus. I didn't know, because when I went there, I wasn't really told what subjects I need to take. Of course, education in the academy was very, very traditional. We had life drawing, life painting, we had uh, lessons in anatomy, we had other, you know, different kind of traditional stuff like that. Whereas here, it's it's very practice based. It's very much you decide what to do. When I did stuff in the UK, it was very much like freedom. <laughs> you know, I could decide whatever I wanted to do. Whereas in Bulgaria, it was like Monday life drawing, Tuesday life drawing, Wednesday composition lessons. Wednesday afternoon, it was um, techniques and technology of paint and stuff like that. So it was so, so, so traditional. And I just felt a bit overwhelmed. But my biggest problem was when teachers actually didn't show up. And you would be waiting there in front of the classroom and the teacher would just call one of the students and say, oh, well, I can't come today. I thought that was just so unprofessional. I'm sorry, National Academy, but that is extremely unprofessional and that needs to be really fixed. On the side in the UK, if a teacher is going to be absent from a lecture, they're going to let you know at least the night before. So you know the next day you don't have to come in if that's the only thing you're going in for. So I really struggled with this kind of um, attitude but other than that, most of the things that we learned were very interesting. I did learn a lot of different kind of painting techniques. I did learn a lot about anatomy, which eventually improved my drawing a lot more. So it had a lot, a lot of pluses, but it did have a lot of negatives as well. And one good thing actually that I really, really liked about the National Academy, you could just leave your materials in your studio and not worry that they're gonna be stolen. Whereas here in the UK, anything you leave is gonna be stolen. Like, you need to take care of your stuff here. And another thing which was really, really a big shocker for me, because I had forgotten how 
horrible Bulgarian toilets can be. And in high school they were always sort of clean, but you could never have any toilet paper in the in the toilet. And I completely forgot about this because here in the university or wherever you go, toilets are sparkling clean and there's always tissue in the toilet or toilet paper. Where and yeah, in the academy that didn't exist of course. But anyways, when I was doing my Erasmus, I met so many lovely people who I'm still friends with today and some of them, you know, they were also coming either on Erasmus or they were coming from, you know, they were foreign students and I have friends now in Greece, in, in the US, I have so many different friends from all over the place. But overall, my Erasmus was a very, very kind of positive experience, it was, it was getting to know another aspect of Bulgaria which I did, had no idea about. I didn't know anything about the university side, you know, even living in Sofia was such an interesting experience. So if you have an opportunity to go to Erasmus, I know now in the current climate it's a bit all over the place, but if you do have the opportunity to go on Erasmus wherever it is, I, I trust that it's going to be a very good experience so if you can do that, if you have the opportunities, just do it because you're going to get, you're just going to grow from it. There's nothing, I don't think there's anything negative about it. Even if your experience within the university is not as good as you hoped it would be, like it was for many of my friends, it's always a very enriching ex experience and I'm just gonna end that story here. And if you have any more questions about my Erasmus in Bulgaria, just pop them in the comments below or message me, message me on Instagram as well if you want. Or if you have any questions about Sofia, if you have any questions about the National Academy, about Birmingham School of Art, about Birmingham in general, ask me. I'm always here to talk. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, which might be another story time. I don't know yet. And if you have any ideas for videos that I can do, just pop them in the comments below as well and let me know what you want to see. And until then, I will see you again. And for now, adios!